I'm here with Scott Davis. Mr. Davis, thanks for being with us today. I want to ask you about this new partnership, but first I want to get your response to those jobs numbers, 216,000 new jobs. What's the state of the economy? Well, I am very encouraged, Hans, with, with two months in a row of over 200,000 private jobs generated in this country, despite a lot of external shocks. I mean, we've had, it's been an unruly world right now with obviously the tragedy in Japan, with the uprisings in the Mideast. Uh, so for, for us to put up those type of numbers is very encouraging. I think we have a resilient economy right now. You're, you're obviously so aware of what's going on in the economy. Do you expect to see more impact from Japan and the Middle East in the next jobs report? Well, I, I, th I think that uh, I'm optimistic that, that if we got through the last two months, that we can keep moving forward. A lot of unanswered issues in Japan still, the Mideast, obviously, we, we, we've got some issues. But I, I, I feel pretty optimistic that the outlook for 2011 was about a 3% GDP growth. I still feel it's a pretty good outlook as we go forward. On, on this partnership, uh, new vehicles, how many do you plan to purchase and over what period of time? Uh, we have today, Hans, 2,000 uh, vehicles, uh, all types, six different technologies, you know, hybrid electric, all electric, uh, compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas, hydraulic hybrid. Uh, we have a, what we call a rolling lab. We're trying a lot of different technologies. We're encouraged by what we see. I think uh, we've got about another 1,000 uh, vehicles on order right now probably in place by the end of 2011, and we need to increase that pace as we move forward. And so looking towards 2012, you might have another round of purchases. Uh... I, I think absolutely. I think, I think this partnership between the government and, and private enterprises is very important. I think we have issues out there like fueling infrastructures for natural gas. We need to solve that. The president sort of acknowledged that in his speeches this week, and I think uh, I'm very optimistic that we'll solve that problem and, and expand that infrastructure and see faster growth going forward. The real key, though, is to get do it in scale. The government's going to buy more of these vehicles. Private enterprise will buy, will buy more vehicles. It should bring the cost down. So is that the main benefit to you, is that the government's involvement in this is going to drive down costs? Are there any tax credits? What do you expect to... Uh, no, I think it's the right thing to do. I think we, uh, running large fleets of vehicles, have, have got to look for supply, and, and we, got, we cannot be reliance on, on the Mideast totally for supply. So we need to find alternatives, whether it be electric, whether it be natural gas. It's critical we find those alternative sources. So the main benefit is more strategic, not economical? Is that what you're saying? I think today it's strategic. I think I think as time goes on, it will become more economical, but we have to do it in scale. We're not there yet. Hi, talking about scale, how many companies are involved now? How many more need to be involved? Well, I, I think the five companies that are represented today uh, all had large fleets. I mean, we are we have 100,000 trucks around the world. So, so while there's only five companies in this partnership to start with, it's a lot of vehicles out there. And I, we'll, we'll expand that as we go forward. Earlier you mentioned some of the different kind of vehicles you're experimenting with, uh, you know, is uh, hydro and whatnot. Any natural gas as well. Anyone getting, uh, any, any one of those technologies look more promising than any others? I think they all look promising. We're excited right now about the liquefied natural gas. Because this is the first really solution that we found for long haul trucks. And long haul trucks, big tractors, they generate or, or burn more than half the fuel that's burned in, in the fleets around the world. This is the first good solution we've had for long distance uh, trucking. Okay, if I can just take one step back and ask you about the overall uh, economic view. Uh, just You talked about it a little bit before in Japan and the Middle East, but overall, what do you see happening out there? Are, are things really starting to come back? Well, I, I think that there's still challenges to the economy as we go forward. You know, we, we've seen a lot of them over the last couple of months. But I think overall, we see global trade growing at a, at a good pace. We talked earlier this year, upper 3% range. We see, we see the same thing. Global economy will grow probably 3.7%, 3.8%. And what helps drive our business is that trade, cross-border trade, which is growing at a fast pace. What about then the trade deals with potentially South Korea might be might be sent to Congress, Colombia, Panama? How crucial are those to your business? Well, I think it's absolutely crucial. You know, we move a lot of those goods, and, and most goods across borders are moved by the, the four integrators uh, around the world. So it's, it's, it's critical for us to make that happen. Korea is a big deal. We, we want to get that done sooner or later. And the president, to reach our goal of, of doubling exports the next five years, it will not happen if we don't get these free trade agreements. Okay. Well, we have, uh, Mr. Davis, we have, look, a truck backing up now. I don't <laughs> think it's a hybrid. I don't think it's running on LNG. <laughs> Shame but on we'll, we'll toss it back to you, <laughs> Melissa. Uh, you heard the, the CEO say that uh, still challenges in the economy, but overall optimistic about growth.